Hey everyone, welcome to the show, my so-called fabulous. I'm Tiffany, welcome everyone. And today we're talking about it. You've asked for it, so we're going to do this. Divorce. Hmm, do you go into a marriage thinking you're getting a divorce? Well, you sh shouldn't, and we have something to say about prenups, but you've asked me about divorce. I have talked about dating from the 20s up through my age and beyond, and now we're talking divorce. I have shared with you about my divorce plural divorces. Um, I'm very transparent. I talk about that so, so much from my success as well as my failures. But today I am so blessed to have this fabulous woman here in Fort Worth, Texas. I've wanted her on the show for years for many reasons, and I'm going to get her back because she is a renaissance woman. Let me tell you, Kelly Lancart, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's so great to see you. Great to see you. I mean, you know, I, I love seeing you. You are, have such a presence on social media, and you know, we both are. The first person I see in the morning is your, you on my feed, so our ag our algorithms are in line. I see you first thing in the morning, too. <laughs> Isn't and that And I say good morning, Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. <laughs> I know. I love it so much. Well, I appreciate you being on here, but I want to set the stage for the people across the world that do not know who you are. Everyone in Fort Worth knows you, but... You are Kelly Lancard, and if you've been to Fort Worth, everyone, Joe T. Garcia's, I was there in the 80s um, at TCU. I probably had one too many margaritas or so, and that is a thing, but Kelly, you are, that is your family. You grew up, and I, I always mispronounced your grandmother's name. Mamas. Mama Seuss was my great grandmother. Great grandmother. And she started, she and her husband started Joe T. Garcia's. So she was an immigrant from Michoacan, Mexico. And in the early 30s, they came to Fort Worth, Texas and had a little grocery store and then moved over across the street and opened Joe's Place. And it only sat 16 at the time. So it started off Joe's Place, not Joe T. Garcia's. Right. Really? And now, 88 years later, we see about 12 or 1,300 at a time. You're kidding. That many? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, now, in the 80s, when I was going at TCU... What was the size or the capacity at that time? Still? I would say about five or six hundred. Five or six hundred. I yeah. mean, I remember the pool. I actually did get in the pool. Can't do that anymore, can you? <laughs> no. I got in the pool. Too. I bet you did. Yeah, I, mean, I, I got in the, you pool in the pool. Too. Well, you are so fabulous to be here. And I love your story. We are talking about divorce, but you left a marriage of 25 years. Yes. And I am sure being in a family business like this restaurant, I mean, Legacy, this is your heritage. This restaurant that you always, from afar, raising your three children, and and I'm going to say this because I have raised husbands too before. But being in a marriage, did you want to be back in the in the in the business at all? I don't know if I wanted to or didn't want to because I'd been a stay at home mom for 25 years. So I had left the business when I got married. When I got divorced, I had to have something to do. And Joe T's is home. Right. So it was just going back home. Right. Absolutely. So you and I have a similarity. We grew up in cultures that that's what you did. You went to high school. You got married. And I remember my mother called it. My mother's deceased. But my mother did say, if you go to college, you're going to get your MRS degree. Correct. Wolf. I mean, that just that, that I would never say that to my daughter. And you would never say that to no. Isabella as well. Or your sons, for sure. No. But that seemed to be what happened back and 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 i'm in i'm 58 and i i mean that just seemed to be the norm not so much anymore so you had the fairy tale wedding but how did you meet david tell us about that well of course i met my former husband at joe t's yeah i was a senior in high school and i waited on him and he was a football player at tcu and he had a bunch of football guys and he was dating someone at the time and he tells the story that um he fell in love with me and it was love at first sight so I graduated from high school and I left on a trip to New York and he broke up with his girlfriend and came and asked my uncle, who is also a Kappa Sig, so is he, and asked him for a job. And so when I got back from New York, um, he asked me on a date. And so when I told my dad, I said, you know, this guy asked me on a date and he said, you don't want to date somebody who's working for us. I said, dad, it's not like I'm going to marry him. I think one date is just fine. <laughs> Three years later, we got married and... Dude had a beautiful wedding. I mean, right. we had the fairy tale wedding. Did we had the you? 1,200 people. Uh, we had the big, beautiful dress, the man mm -hmm. from Miami, the 12 people, mariachi. It was beautiful. There was nothing more, more stunning than that night. So back up to my original words with the podcast, 
the fairy tale wedding, you dating him, you certainly weren't thinking divorce. I wasn't thinking divorce when I got married. Were you? I mean, no. I was not thinking divorce until year 25 when I got divorced. Right. I mean. It was till death do you part. Death do you part, for sure. I grew up Catholic, and you just didn't get divorced. That just wasn't an option. Again, I didn't listen to my words. But you know what? There's, there's, we've talked about this, and each marriage I've had, one was ended tragically, the first one. And the second one, I don't even know who I was. I, I think I was looking for, uh, to, uh, to fix myself, you know, and I, and it was fixing myself through a man. What do you have to say about that? Well, I told you, mm -hmm. I'm unbecoming everything I was never supposed to be. In those 25 years, I'm learning there was a lot I was not supposed to be. And I was not supposed to be a stay-at-home mom. And I was not supposed to be not working during that time. And I sacrificed a lot of myself to support my family and my children and my former husband. And the guy said, this is what married women do. Mm. This is what our job is. We cook, we clean, we take the kids, we plan the parties. Right. And that's all great. And there is another side of us. I mean, a lot of us are business women and we have great minds and we have ideas and we have a lot to offer more than just what sometimes we give ourselves credit for. Mm -hmm. Did you yearn for that? I know you have three beautiful children, thriving and successful. And um, did you yearn for that? I, I know I was I had that mindset of certainly being a, a stay-at-home mom, but I had this passion to work. I went to culinary school, TCU and culinary school, and I just really wanted to work. Um, I almost felt like in my second marriage, I was being, I was just squashed and he didn't do that. Let me make sure that that's clear. He didn't do that, but I just had a yearning for something. And I love being a mama. I really do still do. But did you have that feeling? I did. And I love being a mom. You know that that's my number one. Yes. My kids are my numero uno. Um, but I had a yearning for something. I just didn't know what, because I didn't have enough time or space to give to myself to even have the capacity to understand I'm missing something. I just knew I was missing something. Mm -hmm. And I loved to be like you. I loved being in the kitchen. I loved entertaining. I love giving back to our community. That's super important to me. And I knew there was something else out there for me. I just couldn't put my finger on what it was. Right, right. Something. And maybe it is that yearning for sure. Did, um, did your husband, your former husband, did he support that? Did he want you to go outside the house? And I'm saying this because I do have some friends and I know you do too, because they may feel guilty for staying home. There's no one size fits all, right? But did he mind you going outside the marriage and working? That's a great question. I don't know what the answer to that is because at the time we were so focused on our kids right. and focused on raising them and his job and his priorities. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was space or room to think about what I might want or need in right. that time. Right. So let's go ahead and go through. So divorce happens. Um, I have had people reach out to me privately. People I don't know because I do talk very transparent, transparent about my divorces. And um, I, they ask me, what should I do? And, you know, I'm not in that space. Um, I, I was doing some research to talk about what you and I are talking about. And, you know, it's like, okay, they're in this box. You can't leave during the holidays. You can't do this. You can't do that unless you have this amount of stand up. Again, people, there's not one size fits all in, in a divorce. Do I, I suggest and promote? It's again, not one size fits all, but it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. And to me, it's heartbreaking for the kids. Yes. And that's what I'm hearing so much from young women our age. Well, I mean, we're young, of course. But, you know, that's what the hard part is, right? Yeah. Spilling, wiping those tears. And, and you know, your kids were older. Uh, my daughter was three when I divorced her dad. And, um, well, we divorced. And, um, oh my gosh, y'all, I'm just telling you, and I'd say this and I get emotional. Sending your child on Christmas Day with um, your the, your former husband and his girlfriend or wife, you have to think about that, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, women come to me all the time, and they think my first thing is going 
to be to say to them, get a divorce. Right. And it's not. My first thing is, have you done your work? Yes. Have you done your work? Have you done everything you can to fight for your marriage? And if the answer is yes, then I say leave today. If you've done everything you can, leave today. And the one thing I've learned that I do tell women, I think as, as women, we have a little bit more capacity to wait and try things. But when men are done, they're done. done. So if you know your man is done, then leave. Yeah. There's just no space for waiting around. Because no. when they're done, they're, they've are they already checked out and left the building. Right around. Go ahead and get them out of your house. Right. You know, you just said something, Kelly, about um, have you done your work? Let's share what the work would be because the first one I get mine was, it was very difficult. The second one, I didn't do the work. I didn't do the work. I mean, and I left that saying, I will never do this again. What did I say to you yesterday while we were talking? I will never do this again. If something happens to happens to my fabulous husband, I won't. And I stand by that, but, <laughs> but I didn't do the work. And what would be the work that you would suggest to these women and men? My experience, therapy is the best thing. I love therapy and finding the right therapist is yes. important. And I took some time and I went to onsite in Nashville and took some time to do some intensive because when we get divorced, it's not one person, it's both of us. And I had to look at my part in the breakdown of our marriage and I had a part to play. Mm -hmm. And that was hard. It's hard to look at our own stuff and put it out there on, on the board and say, ooh, I have some yuck that I need to deal with. I have shadow work I need to do and really deal with it and sit in it. And one thing I've really been looking at is is loneliness. And, you know, I have to look at, I can't let somebody else feed my ego because if I am, then what am I doing? I have to feed myself. I have to fuel that fire. So as women, we have to fuel that fire, not another man, mm -mm. not your children, not even your work. You have to find what fuels that fire. Right. What fills your cup, for sure. Yes. For sure. So... With this therapy that you did, I mean, do you, I, I agree, I, and it's, you said it key, a good therapist, because there's good and bad, love y'all, but there's good and bad, and it may be a good one, but it's not a good fit. Correct. Right? Correct. I, I mean, because it takes a lot of work, and you have to be ready for that work, don't you? You have to absolutely be ready, and it may not always look like a therapist. Right now, my functional medicine doctor, I adore her. <laughs> She is who I talk to once a week about a lot of things more than just functional medicine, about what's going on in my heart, what's mm -hmm. going on in my soul, what am I seeing in myself that that is keeping me stuck right? so right. that I can get unstuck and right. stay unstuck. Yeah. But it's an evolving work. We never arrive. Mm -hmm. We're constantly are having to look at ourselves and move forward in our life because we're either moving forward or backwards. We're never standing still. Right. You know, I, I have heard these words recently a lot, or these phrases. Be positive. Think positive. If you got to have this energy, that positive, positive. And I wish I'd have heard those words years and years ago. I probably did, but I wasn't listening because I wasn't doing the work. But it's amazing how much your mindset does change things. It does change things. And and I, you and I see very similar uh, functional medicine doctors and that mind work, right? And functional medicine is, that's a lot of work, right? It's a full-time job. It's it's a for me. It's a full time, full -time job, job to take care of my body. It is. It is. I mean, and in all of the years of stress, I think just compacting on you know um, the guilt that people feel. And I've listened to y'all. You 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 messaged me about guilt, and I can't. I can honestly say that it's real. The guilt of, oh my gosh, if I wouldn't have married this person, this person's so fabulous, This his wife now is great. But let me tell you, we would not have our beautiful children and we have four between us. And that I'm so thankful yes. of the memories made and the, and the good life that our kids did have. Yeah. So, it's so. that mom shame. Yes. It's that mom shame. Yeah. And it's, it's a hard one to break free from. And I think it's something that we have to constantly work on. And I do with my children, even with this Christmas, I sat them down and said, I can't do this extravagant thing that I always do. And we're going to have a great Christmas, but it may not look like it's always look like because I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. And it's time for me to invest in myself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And it begins now because we can always say, oh, at the first of the year, I'm going to start. No, if we don't start what we want to do right now, we won't ever really start. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that. And you know, our kids, our kids are older; they're adults, young yeah. adults, and um, it is different. It just is. Sending my daughter off when she was four just about killed me. Yeah, it just did. And I, yeah, again, if a marriage is not good, and if you're being harmed or you're harming each other, either emotionally, physically, whatever the case may be, if one wants out, but it's tough. It's tough. It's just. It just sucks. I mean, it just, it does, just sending off. But I've been so blessed. Um, my daughter, stepmom, is a jewel, and I hope she's listening to this right now. She is, she's perfect. You know, I just was so blessed with a good divorce. But it's not always that way, you know? It's just not. And I know you and I have friends, mutual friends, going through this, contemplating this, and it's just tough. It is, and my kids are not seeing their dad as often as, as, the regular probably divorced person. And so I do get them a lot more, yet they're adults now. So they have their own partners that they're spending the holidays with. And the traditions that once were are not there where my former husband's family and my family would all be together and all the extra people. And it was a big, huge event. And those aren't happening. So those are the longings my kids have for the traditions that were that were once there. Mm -hmm. And it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because they want to have that sense of family. And they're having to learn there is a new sense of family and mm -hmm. it's different. Yeah. But it's still hard for them because they, you know, they miss that family tradition, the tradition at Christmas, especially, especially at the Christmas. You know, um, Stacey Danford has been on the show. She's my sweet friend and neuroscientist, and she's so fabulous and full of color. And um, she um, and I both have talked about, you know, privately divorce. And she said, you know, create your own new traditions. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be on the day. You know, I mean, exactly. it doesn't have to be on the day. For example, <laughs> this is just Thanksgiving was here recently and 2023. And I think we ate five Thanksgivings, you know what I mean? Just because, it, I mean, but that's a new tradition, like you're saying. And and the kids at our stage are going to have their families, like you said, and then their dads or, you know, the family. So, so it can be a beautiful thing. Yes. You know, so what? do you feel your kids are they are they worried about you are they protective of you of course they're protective but how do you handle that level because as mamas we want to fix everything I know I do I just I want if a child's sick I want to fix it but how do you handle that it's hard. You know my children. So they're six, seven, six, six, and Isabella's almost six foot. So, you know, I birthed giants somehow in my five foot four cell. <laughs> you did. I did. And they're, my boys are super protective. And it's funny because now that I'm single with the whole dating, I had to like say, you can't be on my ring anymore. And, you know, I don't need you tracking me <laughs> um, at night. Or where are you, mom? And I love it. I love that they're protective and they're very, they're very mindful that I do spend a lot of time alone by choice. I enjoy my time alone. I love having time to myself to read, to write, to paint. Um, and I'm trying to teach them that it's okay to be alone, that there's nothing wrong with being alone. It's not a bad word alone. And loneliness is not a bad thing. Right. It's just an emotion. Mm -hmm. Can you go to dinner by yourself? I can. Yes. Yes. That does not bother me at all. At all. I mean, yeah. I, in fact, I relish in that. Yeah. I mean, um, I think I, you're right. Is I was I saw a meme the other day. Um, young, in twenties, how many friends you had? Hundred friends, whatever. And then your thirties, you know, seventy five. And then you have your 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 core group. But it, it's interesting because we do know how to be lonely in our space now. Yeah. And I don't know if it's the fifties. I don't know what it is. Somebody correct me if that's. It's just. Golly, do you remember your mom saying, gosh, if I only knew what I knew back then, if I knew back then what I know now, it is amazing. It is. Girls, listen to me. It's yes. true. <laughs> listen to your mom. Listen to your mothers because, I, I mean, I don't know if Isabella did this to you, but um, our, our girls are very close in age. And um, I remember when um, she was in junior high, high school, about that age, I think I've told you this. I was the biggest dummy that ever walked to face the earth. I was so stupid. Like, I couldn't, I mean, just so dumb. She went to TCU semester, and she's just like, Mom, I am so sorry. You were so smart. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. just 
but it's just it, it's the turn of time yeah you know it as it moves forward definitely so we have had fort worth magazine on here we talk about dating i've had the 20s girls on here i've had the 30s and 40s dating i just watched my daughter dating i'm not dating don't want to date but um i've watched her in it's so different. I, I think I told you yesterday, when I was younger, it was, we're going steady or we're going out. And my mother's like, where are you going? Um, but now it's talking and then texting. I, I know. In your 50s, is it similar to in your 20s to men? Are Absolutely they behaving? Absolutely not. At 51, I'm thinking, if it's not Jason Momoa, it's nobody. <laughs> so that's it. That's it. <laughs> You listen, Jason. <laughs> yeah, it's it's totally different. Yeah. It's completely different. It is texting. It is not even really talking. And so, and then it's you know, are you DMing on Instagram or are you texting on the phone or are you getting a Snapchat? And and it's just um, it's a little bit exhausting. I mean, that's a lot of communication that's not mouth face to face, mouth to mouth too. But basically, <laughs> <laughs> correct. <laughs> Correct. It's not cute. I mean, in your, and seriously, in 50s. In your 50s. Still? Still. And I wonder why that is. That is a, that's a Stacey Danford question, neuroscientist, but why? I just think the social media, the lack of attention span, and the instant gratification that things can bring can cause that to be their number one thing to do. And I've met some lovely men. Oh, I've met some lovely men, and they're, gracious and kind and it, it's a little crazy out there honestly i mean i just i guess you know technology is our friend but then tech's not, technology is not our friend i remember telling Kay, i'm like kennedy go out with these guys she goes they don't ask correct they don't ask mom i'm like how are you ever going to i mean you're talking texting for months but you you know if there's not a chemistry like you sitting in the same room, right? I mean, how can you know if there's chemistry if you're not having a face to face <laughs> conversation on the phone? Correct. I mean, okay. So let me ask you this: dating apps. I'm. I mean, for me right now, no, because I'm really okay with being alone. Yes, I am Go not. If somebody wonderful comes into my life, great. Yeah. If nobody comes into my life, great. Yeah. I'm completely comfortable with who I am. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you know me, mm -hmm. it's going to take a certain kind of man to come into my life and be able to let me shine mm -hmm. and not try to dim that shine. Exactly. And you know what? I have heard this too from some of my friends that are successful and do ha have fabulous jobs that there's the intimidation factor of that. And I and I have heard that multiple times, and I'm just going to go with that because yeah. it's true, right? It is true. And what am I supposed to do about that? Oh, yeah. A am I supposed to lower my standard and lower myself to help a man feel better about himself and his job and his life? Mm -mm. No, no. I'm not going to do that. I've done that before. I'm not doing that again. Right, right, right. No, no. Been there, done that. Yes, I've done that. For sure. So, so the dating apps, I have to tell you, I don't know if I ever told you how I met Greg. No. So Greg hired a firm to find the love of his life. Go figure this out. Okay. So um, my best friend was, at the time, was living in Austin, and she said, you got to turn on Oprah. You got to get a sign up for this. This this. It's not a date. It wasn't an app in whatever year that was, and 2009, and um, no, either was. But um, she said, you got to turn on Oprah because she has this woman on there that's recruiting and she finds the love of your life. Okay, so I go on, I sign up, I do this, all this stuff. And um, it was very expensive. So I, I'm like, I'm out, I'm a single mom. I can't do that. I'm working, you know, a million jobs, it seems like. So um, I put my name in the database and then I'm like, great. I'm just going to be back, you know, the back burner. So I, um, I hear from the recruiter and she said, we have a great guy for you. And um, I was in the database. Greg was the paid client. And we met. He was living in Fort Worth. And I walked off the elevator. Mind you, I said, I'm never doing this again. Walked off the elevator at the Omni. Text my best friend and said, I met my husband. Mm -hmm. And it was, I mean, it was literally like, I was so attracted to him. Yeah. 
probably the wrong reasons, but it worked out. Chemistry is important. Chemistry, don't see? Chemistry, it, it's not going to work. That yeah. has to be part of the equation. Yes. We weren't texting that much on our Blackberries. <laughs> <laughs> Bam, bam, bam. So you know, it's it's it does work. It does work, and that company uh, company is still around, Selective Search, and and um, it it really did work. But I'm like, okay, I don't know, I don't know. You know, that's that was a say la vie moment for me. You know, but again, back to your point, had worked on myself. Had said, I don't need this. I don't. And I remember, oh my gosh, y'all, you're gonna die. The recruiter told me. Have you made a decision? I'm like, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it. She said, this is a good deal. I went, I don't need a good deal. I don't need a good deal. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. is that just crazy that a woman would say that to another woman? I just, no, 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 no. Now it is a good deal because I'm in love, head over heels in love with this man. So, and it was meant to be. It was meant to be. But, you know, just that I think women and men do get caught up in this whole it's it's a good deal, you know. You're a great deal for you know for. I mean, why would we say that, you know? Which you know what, Kelly, which brings me back to our community. Mm. When when you are in where you've been, when you came out of that, you had a stroke, mm-hmm. and I was asking you earlier, you know, what happened, and you shared with me stress, mm-hmm. stress, stress. And surviving that stroke and thriving, I'm sure that gave you so much gumption to move on. But you did need your family. But how important is it to have a group of positive women that are your biggest cheerleaders? It was the biggest blessing of of the entire experience I've had. I have an incredible tribe of women in my life who are my ride or dies, who I can call in the middle of the night, who I can call in the morning, who during that time, they cooked, prayed, laughed, cried, danced, watched movies. They were there. They held space and didn't judge or shame. And that was really important because there was a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And when we go through a divorce, there's a reason for the divorce. And you can't expose that to everyone and talk to everyone about it. But for me, it was so important to have these women in my life. Absolutely. You know, um, you were, I read a magazine, you did an interview with Bold Journey, if I'm not mistaken, and three qualities that you suggested to have that you actually, I'm sure you live by this, was to be present instead of being perfect, right? Because we all get wrapped up in being perfect. Yes, that's a hard one too. When I'm, I mean, I come from a Hispanic family and I came from a Catholic upbringing as well and a family business where perfection is really important important you know your image is important and every flower arrangement is important and every detail is important and yes there are things that are important but i've finally come to realize everything doesn't have to be perfect and i was striving for perfection Mm -hmm. a perfect kid a perfect husband a perfect marriage a perfect christmas the perfect christmas card all the things yeah and now i'm like if it gets done it gets done ah isn't that a liberating feeling yes Take the pressure off of my Oh, it does. It does. The perfection, of course. And I remember that, too, so, so well. And I had a fabulous family upbringing. But I think it was my mother being raised by nuns. Yeah. <laughs> no, she went to Catholic school. I mean, and I mean, she it was it was just instilled in all of us, for sure. Um, we talked about surrounding yourself with positive and, so, and supportive energy, not just people, but energy as well. And then letting go. That's a tough one. Letting go is hard. And I say, my former marriage, I learned where to love. And that's also where I learned how to let go. Mm -hmm. There was a time where I knew this is it. I can't go on any longer. And it's easier for me now to let go of things that I know no longer serve me. Mm -hmm. Relationships, all the different levels of things we have going on in our lives. Mm -hmm. I can now just say, well, they taught me what they needed to teach me for that season. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for them to go on about their way. Right. And it is seasons. It is seasons. I mean, I wish I could put an age stamp on it because I really don't think I can, but it is seasons and everyone's different. And these women that are going through this, that are listening today, that do not know you or me, what is one piece of advice that you could give them if they're considering leaving? Start a journal and every day write five things you're grateful for every day. That has been one of the practices I've started doing in the last five years. And even on the hard days, some days it's 
I'm thankful I have air conditioning in Texas. Yes. Because I can get angry and I can get frustrated. But it's important to get into a, a mindset of gratitude because that changes everything. When I can be grateful for everything, even the hard time, then I know I can get through it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the gratitude journal. Mm-hmm. I asked you yesterday, do you love yourself? Yeah. I know that. I do. And then a great thing. I, I, there was times I didn't love There were myself. times I didn't. Yeah. There were times I was like, this is it. I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And today I'm, I'm definitely not that person anymore. Isn't that so liberating? And I know so many women and men listening to the show want this feeling and you can, you can. Um, and I would say follow the easy steps, but it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. At it's all. one day at a time. And sometimes it's one hour at a time. Mm-hmm. And yeah. be, be kind to yourself. Right. Yeah. And be nice to yourself. Mm-hmm. I know. Definitely, for sure. You have Sunday dinners, and I love it because you've had a tradition for ever doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's your tradition with your kids and your family. I mean, I, and, and if you've read anything with Kelly and, and all the publications that you've done interviews, and then today, your family is so important, and they supported you. And I would say to all of you, have your family. You know, it's it's you can't do it without you know. I couldn't do it without my family. And my sister is my, you know, best friend. And she started hosting. I hosted for a long time. And she took it over for probably the last five years on Sundays. And what I love about her house is I don't look like this on Sundays. No. So on Sundays, it's required. No makeup, sweats, and we just come as we are. And everybody brings something. Sometimes she cooks the whole meal. Mm-hmm. We play poker. We play, you know, cards. We do whatever. And we just hang out and watch. They watch football. I don't really yeah. watch football, but everybody else loves it. <laughs> right. Um, but we just abide. We just right. enjoy each other. It's just a time to just be together. And we see each other a lot because we work together. But it's a little bit different on Sundays because it's it's a little quieter. Right. Right. And, and start your own traditions, everyone, because, you know, uh, divorce is hard. Divorce is hard. That's it. Divorce is hard. That's all there is to it. How do you do this? You work. I mean, I always think about this. I'm a chef, but I don't work in the restaurant capacity. You are entertaining constantly, right? Yeah. I mean, that's true. It's a, it's, I mean, and Joe T's serves 1,500 people. I mean, how do you just let go? One day at a time. <laughs> Depends on what it is. Yeah. It's it's a process. It's a process. And I do a lot of writing. And that helps do me a you lot. really? I write every morning when I wake up. And then at night, I write before I go to bed. And that helps me to process my day and prepare for my next day. Mm-hmm. And that help process has helped me to keep my mind straight on what's important. Mm-hmm. And not get clouded with what is not important, like being perfect. Exactly. It's it- about connection. It's about the people in my life. It's about loving people well. Yeah. Love them well. Love and often, um, you paint too, right? I do. I do. And your daughter is an amazing artist. I mean, I just eat her up every day. Uh, Isabella Breedlove, if you're not following, and but go follow Kelly. She's going to give us your information. But she is amazing. So I was wondering when I was reading a little bit about your art, if if that was she got that from her mama? No, really, she didn't. And and what's amazing is uh, my boys don't publicize this, but both my boys are artists. Are they? Yes. Yeah, so my son, my oldest son, Kent, he's doing a wonderful series of owls right now. He's sketching them and he's going to be in an art show in the spring. And Paul's a writer and he is an incredible, uh, he has incredible ability to even write rap music. It's it's wonderful. Yes. And they just have a gift and they got some of it for me, but I say it's a God-given talent. Right. But I got them really good teachers when they were young. And on Monday nights at my house, 7 to 8.30, there's always art at my house. And we have an art teacher. She comes and facilitates and whichever one of the kids want to come in. And usually it's just Kent and his girlfriend, Samantha, and I and the art teacher. But it's a time for processing on paper. That is amazing. See, you're creating these traditions with yeah. your children. See, and I think that's so important. And thank, um, you. thank you for being here thank and you sharing. Me. You know, and also people listening to this there was a time where I couldn't talk about this at all, and I guarantee you there was a time where Kelly Lankart couldn't really talk about this, right? You weren't ready. I was not ready. You're the first one that I said yes to. She said yes, y'all. She said yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you so much, girly, for being here, and I can't wait to watch you continue to grow and bloom and blossom and tell us how we can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Kelly Lankart. 
And Joe T. Garcia's, we can find them. You can find Joe T. Garcia's at joetgarcia's.com. And just down the street, everyone, there's most fabulous margaritas and nachos ever. So, everyone, I hope this helps so many of you. Please reach out to us, and we're here to help. I'm here to listen, listen to you and um, just, you know, just to learn and observe and be a friend. So, everyone, have a fabulous day. Have a fabulous holiday season and keep being fabulous. 